at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center, the Writer Center Q in Midtown Manhattan, right in the heart and the center of New York um, City, and uh, the, perhaps still the great, great capital of theater uh, in the US, and perhaps the most European uh, city of the Americas, and perhaps the most American of all European cities. So it's a quite a mixture of a, a, a town, a city we all love to be in. But it had been shut down in the last year. It came to a stand, something uh, unheard of, as did theater in the world uh, for the first time in the history of theater, actually. Almost everything came to a still stand. Nothing was opened. And even in the time of Shakespeare and the plague, Plippy, the companies were able to perform outside London. Um, but in this time, it did not happen. It is still all closed here, or almost everything. We see the first opening small performances, 20, 30 people. Uh, yesterday, we had um, the Jack, uh, Alec Daffy with us, and Brian from the Chocolate Factory, who talked about you know, how they are slowly reopening um, the spaces, but so many questions <clears throat> are attached uh, um, to this. And the great Joe Melillo, who we also would like to thank to today to, that he has connected us to Francesc Casa de Zeus, who is with us here from Spain, from Barcelona, the great uh, Greg Festival de Barcelona. Um, Joe said, well, you know, uh, still people have to be comfortable to come back. They have to be 80% at least of uh, people in the seats. And they often there were tourists. There are people from outside, from Jersey, Connecticut, uh, from, uh, from um, regions that are outside from New York and from the world. And um, even if everybody is vaccinated here, um, we don't know when will we come back and perhaps it will not be in September, how the mayor declared in a press conference, it will be perhaps even next year. The situation um, is changing rapidly uh, in Corona. We feel we are out of the tunnel, that car that has been up in the air uh, uh, and seems to have landed somehow still uh, on the four wheels but uh, so many uh, things are, are uh, uh, open and especially where are we driving to and that stuttering motor, will it be uh, functioning again or will it overheat or even give up? Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's working. Um, for us, it's a very emotional day today. It's the last day of Siegel Talks focused on Corona. We started last March very early on as one of the few organizations we felt we do not show uh, reruns of our own uh, Siegel events. We have about five or 600 of them. You can find them on our website. We felt we should encourage conversation, but especially also a global conversation. That's what we felt strongly to really find out how are people doing this and Boga say a knock at the door and to see how are you, what are you thinking about? What uh, is this time telling us and to create meaning? It has always been artists who helped us to understand life better, to create meaning to uh, fight the right fights, to be on the side of justice, uh, of the right uh, uh, course of history and artists um, have been doing this and they're in the present, but very often also anticipate the future. And so many artists that actually the play we did before, what we were working on, it is as almost as if um, we knew about what uh, would be coming. Um, the situation today is uh, encouraging. It's a beautiful summer day here in New York. People are happy uh, outside in the parks and the food markets. But in the world still, it's complex. Even so, Iceland uh, completely removed all masks. Uh, in Israel, again, people are encouraged to put masks back on, uh, which was a little lab experiment. Everybody got vaccinated so fast in complete exchange for data. Um, with Pfizer and um, the Delta variant seems to be much, much stronger and many young people have not been uh, uh, vaccinated. In Russia, it's a catastrophic situation. Uh, so visitors from the European soccer championship are coming back with Corona cases. In Brazil and Chile, um, it is still completely out of control. And the big question also is for us, what does it mean? Even if New York City, 70% are vaccinated, still 30% are not, these are 3 million people much, much many more people that even they have died worldwide from the coronavirus as we know. And the new Delta virus is so strong, uh, especially for young people who have not been on the list yet. It doesn't care about age as much as the one before. So we um, are still worried about it. Um, as the end of our Siegel Talks, we will do a 24 hour marathon to uh, raise awareness for the situation in India. Our theater colleagues who are up day and night in order to connect people, it is so, apocalyptic uh, 
Abhishek Majumba said it's almost state-sponsored murder. Is It is such a rich country, India. It did not prepare. It did not take into account what could happen. And they have done so much work. They have many theater artists around the world. So this will be a thank you to all theater artists and uh, and to, to raise um, a bit of the awareness of even if we feel better here, uh, there is still so much uh, to do. Normally, uh, Francesca, or Jessica, uh, we, we always say it's about listening. And uh, so I really apologize for talking so much. And I'm a bit emotional since it's the last one of the formal Siegel talks. We will continue Siegel talks, I think, in another way, maybe not focused on Corona, but still, this is the last one. And I think it's a great. Uh, um, um, great uh, contribution to hear today from Europe, to hear from Spain, to hear from the uh, what's happening in the country where the Spanish is spoken. One of the world powers, one could say also in theater, that's a long tradition coming out of Jesuit theater, of course, Cervantes' first play. And then um, of course, that incredible rich uh, tradition beyond the golden age, also Barcelona, Madrid are such centers of, of theater. That I think the, if I understand right, there's a fluidity between theater and film, television. Uh, we have published many plays from Spain uh, together with the Cervantes Institute and Institute Roman Lull. And so uh, we are a bit familiar with our Latin American uh, publications. But if you are honest, we have to say we know very little what is really going on. There are not enough communication. There are not enough bridges. And we hope this will be um, um, one of them. So today, we have one of the great workers in the vineyard of uh, uh, Spanish uh, theater, Francesca Cada de Sus, uh, who runs the Greg Festival, or Greek, or Greg Festival de Barcelona. We um, uh, really honored uh, to have you with us here, and you happen to be our last guest, so this is quite a, a significant uh, statement, also, I think, towards uh, Spanish uh, theater, Spanish language. Um, for our viewers, let me a little Tell me a little bit uh, about uh, uh, Francesca in a moment. But first of all, where are you? Uh, what time is it? Are you at home? Are you in a hospital? Are you in a in a theater? What's going on? Where are you? Well, first, first of all, uh, let me say hello to all my friends who I don't see since a very long time. I miss so much traveling around the world and, and meeting my colleagues. And and hello to everyone. And uh, thanks for organizing this uh, theater commons where we can share our ideas, our our hopes, our visions for the future. Uh, I'm right now at uh, my office. I'm about to leave like after this talk because I'm going to a general rehearsal. We're opening the festival tomorrow. Uh, my office is at Ramblas in Barcelona, right at the heart of Barcelona in a palace of the 17th century. And uh, next to, for some of you who know Barcelona, La, Bo La Boqueria Market. So that's where I am. Looking through the window, I see the Ramblas. Incredible, and they are so beautiful. They are so famous. If you ever make up your mind if you have to go in Europe, please do uh, visit Barcelona. Um, so that's incredible. I know you told us, Frank. I am. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm working so hard. They are opening tomorrow, one of the major festivals in Europe. Tell us a little bit about your festival. Well, the festival I'm running now is uh, the big festival of Barcelona. It's a festival that. The name is a bit is a bit funny. It's called Greek Festival because the heart of the of the festival is a Greek theater, but it's a fake Greek <laughs> theater. It was it was built in 1929, uh, but it's it's a copy of Epidaurus. So it's like a outdoor round mm -hmm. uh, a theater of uh, two, more than 2,000 people that we use as as the the central venue for the festival. But we actually taking we are taking taking about uh, 50 venues in the city. So we, we, we will present about 150 performances in, in five weeks. Incredible. So, and how old is the Greek theater, the structure itself? The structure is from 1929. It was built uh, for a world exhibition that took place in Barcelona in 1929. So it was uh, like in an area, in an area of town where there's all their buildings, all the theaters, uh, palaces, and it's what we call the, the, the the city of theater in Barcelona. There's several places, which means that for the festival, we can walk from one venue to another, to another and see several performances in the same day. Incredible. And we spoke uh, to Theater der Welt in Germany, to the Edinburgh Festival. They actually had to create outdoor spaces, kind of in the style of Greek, Greek theater. You have that, and even with 2,000 seats, that's incredible. They have seats between three, 400 to 900, and depending on 
the numbers uh, with social distancing, they can adjust the audiences. So quite interesting um, that uh, what your festival is named after is actually, you know, about what we talk about, uh, theater also outside in the open air, going back to the roots, uh, to that, mm. whatever Actually, the idea, yeah? We are, try we are trying to connect with other fe other festivals in the Mediterranean, so trying to create a network with other Greek or Roman, Roman theaters, ancient theaters, and uh, we're trying oh. to collaborate. It's a, a new initiative. Wonderful. So for all of us, uh, and I also have to know, I did not know about Francesca, Oh, Jessica, so 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 much. Uh, he is uh, very passionate. He says in his bio about culture, reading, which is important, and he's committed to associations and with great curiosity to know uh, about other ways to look um, at the world. He studied psychology in Barcelona. So, like so many the directors, Carl Serebrenikov, I mean, as he one of those who did not study theater, theater. He came from the sciences towards um, um, this theater. And I think there is something important about that. And um, he combined it uh, with classics and he studied then at the Institut del Teatro and later graduated in Amsterdam. And after his uh, master's, he studied cultural uh, management and the production of shows uh, for the Digira company and uh, the management of the Institute of Cultura de Vic. And he was programming Teatro Atlantida, if I said right, at the Museo del Art Contemporáneo, the Contemporary Art Museum, um, I would guess in, in Barcelona? Yeah, some people say that I've, I've gone through a very funny like a trajectory because I started like, when I, when I did cultural management, first I did production in musicals, like I was responsible uh -huh. for Chicago in Spain. <laughs> and yeah. then, uh, then I, I did uh, work in a small city of uh, 30,000 people where I was running the theater. Uh, later on, I worked for the Museum of Contemporary Art, and uh, later uh, on the uh, Dance House of Spain. I was there found, founding uh, and directing the Dance House of Spain, and then now in, at the at the theater festival. So I've been uh, kind of my curiosity has driven me through different places uh, in, the, in the world of culture, not only theater. Which is important, and the uh, Mercat de les Flores is the Casa del Danza that is That's the, the dance festival. House. The dance, dance house you house. created and you have to tell us a bit more so um how is this situation in spain at the moment since you're opening tomorrow i guess uh, it's, mm. it seems uh, better than here in the us but tell us a little bit how is it today uh well let's be optimistic let's bring some light to this darkness uh here the situation is uh regarding the the virus is uh, let's say under control more or less. So now we are vaccinating uh, like uh, under 30. So about more than 50% of the people is fully vaccinated. And 50, people, five zero. Yeah, five zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and people feels safe in, in a way and people is hungry for, for, uh, I mean, for, for going out and have a great uh, weather, terraces and so on. So the energy is, is, is very, very positive. Uh, you have to know that we never close the theaters. Spain has been the only, the only country, I think, or maybe one of the only that uh, never closed the theaters dur during this pandemic. So in la last summer, in July, uh, our festival was the first one to open in Europe of, of this kind. So we could celebrate the festival even last year uh, with a big effort. Outside or also inside? Also inside, outside full, and inside. Full capacity? No, of course not. But uh, with 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 different kind of precautions and, and and controls and so on. But nevertheless, we could we could we could make the festival. In we opened last year, the first of July, with thirty percent of the capacity. But the festival happened, and and after that, because we created all the protocols, these protocols have been shared with other festivals. There's been other festivals in Europe, but not of this kind. We we we. We presented about 50 or 60 performances last year uh, okay. with 30 percent of the audience uh, with uh, new protocols but nevertheless the festival happened it was very important at a certain point in last july middle of july uh, there was a moment where the number of cases of cases was rising so and uh, the people w went out to the street to claim for culture to, to to i mean there was there was a big demonstration people wanted the festival to continue they were in front of the theater saying open the theater, please, we need culture. And uh, since then, uh, the theaters have been open in Spain. 
So now we are Incredible. celebrating the festival this year again, of course. Uh, this year, instead of 30%, we will have 70% of the capacity. The masks will be not compulsory from tomorrow on uh, in Spain, in the streets, but you have to you have to wear the masks in the theater if you, are, if you cannot keep a distance of 1.5 meters. But they are not compulsory. Uh, tomorrow will be the last day, officially, if nothing happens. Incredible, though. good timing um, with your festival. So let me get that right. People went on the street um, with signs and uh, and went in front of the theater said, we want culture, we need culture. Yes. Um, and incredibly, it's so different than from France and what we had also a country with such a great tradition where alcohol stores were open and uh, you know, they, but you couldn't get into a bookstore and all the theaters were closed. Meanwhile, churches, you know, had no mm. restrictions and, um, and their singing took place. So, um, and uh, the cultural uh, sector was very upset, but I didn't hear of any demonstrations. So how many people were there? Were you part of that? Were they theater people, theater artists, or were they the people of uh, Barcelona? It's hard to say, but the, I mean, as I said, we had, the, we had a very uh, strong movement here uh, because of course we closed the theaters in March, April, May, uh, we kept trying and changing and adapting and changing the program and we were always positive positive that we would make the festival happen. We had different plans, ABC, like most of, uh, of, of you, most of our, our colleagues were trying to save as much as possible. But there was a moment where uh, we created a working group with uh, the politicians, the people from the health department, the people from the private sector, the people from the public sector, and we all agreed on uh, certain protocols to reopen the theatres. We, we did some tryouts and uh, in the 1st of July, we opened the theater. So there was, everything was working fine. There were no cases. We could prove that the cases were not happening in the theaters with the masks, with uh, uh, so on and so on. But there was a moment around the 15th of July last year when after two weeks of the festival that uh, the number of, of cases was rising and then Finally, some, the authorities decided, okay, we have to close the festival. Uh, and at that point, the people were, uh, going, were, were going to the street because you could see terraces were full, the beach was full of people. Why not in the theater where you have your number, your seat, your mask and everything. And uh, thanks to the people, we could, uh, we could remain open. And uh, as I said, I think that was the key because, because uh, in September, the theaters were allowed to open again. And there were only two weeks in November when we had to close again, but since then they have been open at 30% of the capacity, uh, most of the year at 50%, and now since uh, one month at 70%. Incredible. And is this the same true for Madrid or Sevilla or other uh, 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 cities, or is something special happening in Barcelona that people talk to each other? In Barcelona, we were like the first ones and the first festival of this kind, but there were other festivals in, 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 in the summer last year, like the Merida Festival, like the Atros del Canal in Madrid, there were others. And, uh, and basically, they have been, uh, all of them open through, throughout the year, with some exceptions when the number of cases was rising in some parts or some town. But generally speaking, uh, the whole, all the theaters have been open in all of Spain. Incredible. Um, we are thinking in some way, and uh, of course we are a splintered group, but hopefully we will get together. There has to be a festival also in New York City, the Avignon Festival, the Edinburgh Festival. So many are opened after World War II, uh, after crisis, after people were starving also to go out and see something like your protesters in Barcelona demanded. Um, we hope we might get this done here. Tell us a bit, what, what does the festival mean for the city of Barcelona? Is that uh, part of the identity? Uh, is it, uh, how, how long has it been going on? Uh, how, what, what is working well? Well, some, some people are trying to comp compare festivals. Some people, um, I mean, we are, we are playing, uh, uh, or we are collaborating with all these festivals that you mentioned. We collaborate with Avignon, we collaborate with Edinburgh. There are festivals of the, more or less the same size as we have. Um, but I, I don't think we can compare. F festival has to be unique. Festival, the festival has to be something unique for a city and has to be, my idea is festival has to be part of a system of, of, a, of the 
the system of theater. Like it doesn't, uh, for me, it's very important to connect the festival, which is a moment of stress, a moment of brightness, a moment of uh, excitement. It has to be connected with uh, what is happening in the city the rest of the year. So festival has to have uh, this uh, moment of visibility for some of the artists that work throughout the year. It has to have a moment of stimulation, bringing new names, new ideas, new artists. It has to have a moment of uh, sharing with communities. It has to have a moment of uh, uh, excitement in a way of stress, but it has to be unique. So I don't know what kind of festival New York needs because New York mm -hmm. is, a, is a fantastic city. I, I'm, of course, I'm not capable to define what is the moment of a festival if New York needs a festival. But what is uh, for me very important is that it belongs to the city. Uh, in, a, in my case, the project I'm trying to run as the Festival of Barcelona. It's a festival, it's now, this year it's a 45th edition. I'm trying that that it's, it's, it's unique, it's unique to the city. With the festival, I try to like discover new places, open um, the eyes of new ways of looking at the city, artists that bring different angles of what you see during the year, that, that, that you can discover the city um, with new eyes. I think it has. It, I think festivals are important if they are connected to the to the to the city, to the fabric of it. How did it start? So it's in the mid '80s, I guess, or the early '80s. Seventy-six. Yeah. Seventy-six. Seventy-six. It was this well similar similar history as Avignon, as as other these other European festivals. There was, in our case, uh, with the difference that we still have a we, we still had a dictator at that time. Franco was still alive. So there was a mixture of uh, desire to change the world in a way, desire to change also our world, the world we lived in after the dictatorship. Uh, it was uh, also in our case, uh, the story is very peculiar because it was an occupation. This theater already existed, but it was, there was an occupation by the by the some of the artists. I said, well, we need oh, the, we Greek, want. the Greek theater. Yeah, they took it over. Of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they which jumped. theater? Sorry, which theater was uh, occupied? The the Greek, the Greek. Theater. The outdoor, the two thousand yeah, yeah. seat was yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was a fence around it. It lay right. dormant for. They jumped over the fence. They they occupied the theater and they celebrate like a four days festival, with uh, all kinds of performances, music, uh, uh, celebration, and uh, and it was the it was programmed by like a kind of association of artists that did the program of that first edition in 76. And so Franco would, was alive or was he already, uh, you know, he had that uh, moment of unconsciousness. How, how, how many years before was it? Was Franco died in 77. Uh -huh. So it was one year before, but, it, but everything was like in, in a very, very, uh, like there was hunger for democracy in Spain at the time, and in particularly in Barcelona. Yeah, I remember I was in Barcelona and Madrid shortly also after that. And if you, if you took a subway, everybody was reading. You know, everybody had a book in their hands. You know, I had never seen that in my life. And people, that's why the, and the energy is, of the streets, yeah. That's why the festival is very, very connected with the, with the people here. And that's why it's very important. Even it's a festival that most of the audience is local. Uh, so uh, when, I, when I look at the people, like 80%, 90% of the audience is from Barcelona. It's a very, very special thing to do in like in the summer night, go to the to this theater. It's, it's like on top of the hill. So actually you see the sunset, the lights of the city shining. It's very, very, very beautiful, very special. So the, everybody that lives in Barcelona loves this festival. That's I think why it's so important. I'm so honored to be now at the head of it. And how important also to, to keep it running and alive. What were the, if I may ask, what were the first performances? Were they um, music groups or Greek plays or uh, was it political agit prop? Uh, what was? In 76? Well, actually, I mean, you, the, on, on our website, there's the archive. Archive, yeah. you can see the mm -hmm. whole program like since 76 till up to, up to now. It was a moment where there was like a lot of uh, groups uh, that were creating like in community. There was there was uh, great painters. I don't know if I give you names if if they tell anything yeah. to you or not. But there was a moment like a mo moment of creation in community, uh, which was for me the base of some of the big companies that came out of Barcelona later on, like uh, during the Olympic times, for example. Mm. Some of El these comedians, uh, Favore del Baos, yes. all these. People have seen they were, they were such strong. They were yeah. 
they were there in the 76, for example, oh, one of the names there. that you mentioned. Yes. <laughs> so that was in the mix between cultural, cult, uh, cultural, like popular culture, uh, popular music. Of course, there were like a big influence of, uh, of folk music from the US, for example, like Woodstock concerts, this kind of energy. That was the mm -hmm. beginning of our festival until now. In, in, incredible. So, um, when you took it over, what was your vision? What did you say? I think this is what we should bring in. How many years have you done it now? And, and when you took it over, what did you change? This will, this, this will be starting tomorrow, my fifth edition of the festival. Uh, for me, I've been working on, on maybe like one, one idea. For me, it's very important is to promote creativity. Like I really, really care about uh, Create creation and about talent. So I like to to engage with local talent and, and help local talent to develop. And I really like the, the idea that festival connects with uh, with uh, all citizens, not only the ones the theater goers, but also the different the different people that lives in the city today. Mm -hmm. So I'm working that the festival is not like elitist in a way that. Um, that uh, embraces all types of people, all types of audience. At the same time, that I want to bring the highest quality artists that I can, that I can afford, especially new languages and especially new voices. So more or less, these are and and it's not easy because uh, it's not only the great theater. As I said, uh, we're having about forty five different venues in the festival. I'm mm -hmm. creating a fantastic project also with museums, which are now involved in the festival, which they were not before. So there was there was a lot of like participatory projects or installations in different museums in the city. So I want that the festival reflects Barcelona with the creativity of Barcelona, with the different kind of people that lives in it, and that brings new voices uh, around the world that can help us uh, change or be updated and and hear the, the most advanced voices uh, in the artistic world in the world. Yeah, incredible. We had, uh, you know, uh, at our Siegel Center, I think uh, Benet E. Jeanette came and uh, Jackie Berbel and Cournier and, and many, many um, and, and others. It's such a lively um, scene that somehow has never connected as strongly as the perhaps as the French or the UK or theater um, and to the US. Um, what, what do you think? Uh, um, makes it special uh, why is barcelona at least to our eyes um you know we see more signals are coming from barcelona than from madrid why what is special in that city for me creativity that's what i believe yeah. barcelona is creativity barcelona is a is, is a creative city and it has no fear of the new i think that what that's what has made barcelona great and uh it's all always open to new voices um i think people are hungry for uh, for uh, being stimulated with new ideas new voices mixtures here it's very easy uh, to to see an artist from one discipline that works with another from another discipline like as an example for example when i i've been working a lot with flamenco and contemporary flamenco artists they come to barcelona to develop new ideas which they cannot do in other parts of spain for me this is an example it's like a city that it's vibrant there's a lot of energy there's a lot of creativity and people respect that, like that, and support it. I think that's how I like to see the city. Tell us about the 50 or 60 places. There, there cannot be 50. Are there 60 theaters, really? Or do you have places that normally are not theaters you use for the festival? And tell us a bit about big stages and uh, small stages. How, how are you... How, how are they constructed, those? Uh, uh, Generally speaking, uh, the, the festival has, like, different centers. There is one center where, where the Greg Theater is, and there's like the, this 2006 theater. But next to it, there's venues, there's like six venues with different capacities. Teatro Libre, which has 800 seats, Mercat de las Flores, which has 500, and, and some smaller venues. That's the heart of the, that's the heart of the festival. We call it Montjuic, which is the mountain, uh, the mountain that is the heart of, 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 the, of the Great Theater. Then we have city theaters, the National Theatre of Barcelona. Then we have uh, theatres, uh, which we call it private, uh, which which normally we work with them in, in a system of co-production. Um, but nevertheless, they participate on the on the 
on the idea of the festival. We agree on the on the project we present. And there's a network of small theaters of uh, around 100 seats. There's about 15 of them that we present works on these 15 venues of 100. There's then the network of museums. This year we have 10 museums that participate in the oh. in in the in the festival, like Center for Contemporary Culture, Museum of Contemporary Art, National Museum of Art, more or less uh, these museums. And then on top of that, like the last of these centers is a, a structure that we have of we, we call factories for creation. Barcelona has 12 factories for creation. Each one of them is specialized in one art. There's one factory for circus, one factory for visual arts, one factory for, for writing, for theater. Uh, and each of them participate, not only presenting artists, but also like with a creative residence where the artists can develop work. Factory means there is a, a old industrial space Correct. reused for Correct. a creation of a social uh, fantasy of uh, imagination. Correct. And then we have the parallel activities with the civic centers or with the libraries uh, throughout the city. They, they do different kinds of talks and other activities. Mm. Wow, that is, it's just, it sounds so fantastic. I have to come and I think everybody should, should go out. And, and we have a big square visit. in the center with uh, restaurants and, uh, and wine and, and food, which is a yeah. very big part of our culture is the meeting point. So right down the Greek theater, there's a big uh, square where there's always uh, a terrace where you can go have a drink and meet the people that are going from one place to another, which is a big part of the festival, this social so, event, social meeting. So you see audience members, but also artists, they mingle in that square. Of course, yeah, yes, of course. Which this year is a bit less uh, mm, alive as it used to be because we have distances and so on and so on. But I hope it still will be magic. The, the summer nights are magic in that in that square. Yeah, incredible. It's really it's the celebration of life, of the truth, of art, but also of a city and um, and a way to engage in life. And uh, and nothing against sports events. We also like them, but you know this is something that perhaps is better able to reflect the complexities um, of, of the world we live in and to at what you also wrote in your bio, which I like writing with the first sentence, you know, how, how to look at this world in a new or different way that your work is all about this. And this is what we have to do now. Um, Sorry, Brennikov, when he was Kirill said, you know, um, we have to start anew based on our experience, but we have to have a new start. Uh, Mila Rao, who says we have to question everything. You know, we have to uh, go back to the drawing board. How is it? How was it for you in that time you had? Also, I guess uh, perhaps a bit more time in your beautiful uh, office in a 17th century palace. Um, um, where did uh, I guess uh, built on the time of Versailles and the great uh, Spanish kings? What, what did it, now we have the wonderful civil ceremonies? You know, which I think is an important. A point to make that uh, it is no longer the pomp and circumstances of the royal court, you know, of, or of dictators that now in the center of a big European city like Barcelona, the celebration is art. I mean, it's a fantastic moment, I think, also in history of mankind and what you're contributing to. But what do you feel will be different? Or, will you say, actually, for us, we want to continue because we were already on the right path. Are there changes after the time of Corona for your festival? Uh, well, I've had several discussions on that topic, like uh, what will change after Corona times. Um, and I, I, I really, I think we don't know, but something deep has changed in our minds and uh, everyone has to take responsibility for changing the things that want to, that, that think they have to be done better. For me, in, 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 in I, I feel a big responsibility. I'm running a festival which, is, which has public money. So for me, the responsibility of, of, of helping the artists or even changing the idea I have uh, to, to see what is important, I think we have to, we have to be very aware of what matters, what, what, what matters to us, what matters to the world. And we have to keep that in mind and forget about our our urgencies, our daily urgencies. So what 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 is important? What matters uh, for me as a festival? As I said, 
for me, what it matters is the responsibility we have towards the, an audience. Well, listen, last year we made a festival and uh, and I, I mean, every day, every day, several times a day, I was receiving thank you, thank you, thank you from people in the audience that I don't know. Thank you for making the festival happen. Thank you for making the festival happen. Was I was really touched by these people that were so grateful that that culture was helping them in their in these moments of of of, of darkness. It was so I could feel uh, that culture was important to people. That culture matters to people. I think that's something very deep that I never felt before in my professional life. That culture is important. That culture helps. That culture matters. Culture brings hopes. Uh, visions, ideas can help you reimagine the future in and hope hoping in a very positive way. So I think this this idea that culture is important for me, it's something that I take from last year experience. How I would like to change the world. I think that's more intellectual, but I have to go deeper into myself and and, and, and think what 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 matters to me, what is important to me, what um what do you want don't want to give up? Also these days, for example, we have we have closed our borders. We've been we've been talking very much with people around us. I think internal internationalization is very important. Talking to you, new ideas, things that I don't understand. Talking to people that do, do not think the same as you think. These kind of things they are important to me because otherwise I become smaller. I think we have to think big. We have to think in a very optimistic world. I'm, what happened with the vaccines is amazing. I mean, it's it's just one year, so we have to be optimistic about humankind and and take that as 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 a tool to change the world in a, in a better way. I think uh, that's what art does. That was what theater does. That what culture can do, and we are responsible for for taking this great big energy forward. Are you detecting? within the artists of Spain or Barcelona, and I don't know how international, most probably it's also a very international festival, but are you detecting uh, a change in themes, uh, in ways of producing or in, uh, uh, in style, in uh, aesthetics? Are you noticing it's something? Bit, it's a bit too soon. Like for example, last year, what, what I detected was a great energy. People really wanted to create, people really wanted to work. Uh, now we are detecting the moment of uh, people going back to the to the stages. This energy of okay, here I am back again. Uh, mm, the quality of the performances that we we, we presented last year was extraordinary. We, people went very very deep into themselves in the in the in the in the quality in what they wanted to say. Uh, at this moment, I detect a very creative and positive energy. <coughs> But I don't know, this also depends on other elements like uh, conditions to create. I mean, there's, it's, 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 a, it's a bit, I mean, it's, a, it's not a very good situation for a lot of companies, artists that could not perform, that could not make their money. So there might be a moment of depression, of depression soon. There might be a moment of uh, weakness for our cultural sector. That's why we have to fight harder than before because culture is important and we have to fight for it. If the artists are going to change in what they want to say, I hope no. I think artists have to have the freedom to talk about everything. Uh, and uh, I, I, I mean, I don't want now uh, next season all performances talking about Corona. I think I think uh, artists have to be free to talk about what they want to talk uh, and to have to to be, I mean, open to any new ideas. Um, we have to be uh, as directors more aware of. Uh, I mean, there are no issues like sustainability, future. Uh, I detect also, like with my colleagues in Europe, it's maybe a moment for sharing more than before. For uh, We have to forget about premieres or European premieres. We have to talk about collaboration, networks, creating together, making the best for the artists and creating the best conditions to, to work. Mm. So in a way, um, global issues or whatever are, are perhaps a bit more like well, in the environment, uh, global warming, um, and here in America, of course, racism. You know about Trevor Martin um, of, is on the, uh, the the white supremacy as it was being being used now as a term, but we made us really think about uh, more about um, what we do. Also, the capitalistic system, which is perhaps 
a bit more uh, uh, more more naked and cruel in the America than, uh, than in Spain. So these are themes that uh, seem to come up with more socially political engaged art um, here. I have a top. I mean, I have a topics every year in the festival because, as I said, I want the festival to talk about the issues that matter to people that are important to the people in the society. And um, you can touch them in a very superficial way or in, in a deeper way. For example, this year our festival this year is is uh, dedicated to Africa in a way. I mean, I I created a, a my project has been like a tour around the world. Uh, so I dedicated one festival to the Mediterranean, one year to the Silk Road, one year to mm -hmm. the uh, to the Anglo-Saxon world, uh, collaborating with institutions like BAM in New York or like Melbourne Festival. Last year, the Latin America was in our focus, and this year, Africa. So the topic of uh, of Africa, of uh, of Black people, Black Lives Matter is very present because I put that on the table. Maybe it was not on the table before, but I put that on the table because it's a global issue. And I'm this year, I'm looking very much at the Africa we can see in Barcelona, Barcelona is, um, I mean, we are not far from Africa, actually. Morocco is around the corner. It's half an hour or one hour flight from here. So we, we receive a lot of people from, from Africa, from Northern Africa. It's a big topic, it's a big issue. And that's, a, that's our opening tomorrow. Uh, for the first time I put on stage uh, actors from um, like Arab countries, talking about their stories, about their lives, about their trip. Uh, between Morocco and, and, and Spain, the, the, this crossing the fences of Europe. And I think uh, this is important for us to talk about because we want to do things in a different way. Maybe tell us a little bit. I mean, it's, a, it's an idea. It's easy to say, you know, also funders say yes. But you are someone who then has to put it into a reality on the stages. How did you proceed? What did you select companies? Uh, you invited people. How does it? How is it going to look like? Is it in the factories? Uh, exchange of ideas? Will um, the public places? Or, or do you produce plays, dance? Uh, tell us a bit. How did you? Um, um, how would one say? You implement that. How does? How did you do it? Creating a festival is a long process of listening, which. You don't. It's not like going to the supermarket uh, and shopping, and, and it's 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 different. Of course, you can you can you can create a festival putting one performance after the other. But for me, it's much deeper than that. Uh, of course, you want to have like names that need to be seen, that you think need to be seen, because you have to imagine also uh, what 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 is important, what can change people's minds. But it's not like a shopping basket. You you, in our case, for example, this year that I wanted to put Africa in focus. Um, if I bring only artists from Africa like that, it's not enough. I, for me, it, it, was, it was a need to look at the Africa that we have in Barcelona, to talk to the different artists from Af African roots that live here, to talk to them, to listen to them, to see what, what is important to them, to, to look at, at the artists that, that, uh, that work locally, and to see what, or to imagine what was, what what was the needs, what needed to be changed. In this case, this year in particular, uh, because Africa is also a big continent, and it's not so easy also to bring artists from from Africa, especially this year. We do have some, but it, it's not easy. What we are doing is a lot of workshops. We are doing, we are creating, we are bringing artists that are creating in Barcelona with artists from Barcelona, and uh, we're trying to to have them for a longer period of time. Um, and create a deeper connections with the city and with the artists from the city or with the citizens. So that's been in our, in my mind. Like I cannot do an, an, a festival dedicated to Africa and just bringing people with an airplane and, and leaving the city. So I'm trying to have them for a longer period of time and trying to create connections with local artists and trying to create workshops and develop uh, some different types of uh, of uh, of of relations, I would say. At the same time, uh, I'm trying to embrace uh, local artists uh, that have these roots and put them in the program, maybe at a different level, then maybe you create like the main platform or the festival, but you also create other platforms where these artists can be seen and have their voice and their space in the in the big frame of the festival. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a combination of, uh, of, of different international local artists but I think the main issue for me, the one that starts the whole thing is listening. 
listening to what's happening internationally, listening to what's happening locally, and trying to convey the different voices. Hmm. I, I, I don't know if I'm clear. No, enough. no, it's very, <laughs> that's important. I think also to say, you know, it's no longer the uh, kind of ghetto tourism in a way, what we, what we criticize in the tourism industry, you fly into a resort, you know, and then you fly out, but you haven't seen anything of the country. On the contrary, uh, cliches have been reinforced. Um, and uh, and I think now we also see that here to the, the demand say maybe artists should stay longer, maybe they should engage, but you are already doing that. And then you share an end of a workshop, like people are invited or or do they represent a dance, a, a music a concert that you have commissioned or is it on a process workshop level? Uh, well, I, I, I have to give you different examples because it's very mm -hmm. different. But yeah, for tell example, us. Would be also I'm names, waiting yeah. now for a phone call. I'm waiting for a company from Mali, Toyota Kali, Toyota Kali, who were with Kronos Quartet. They, they, mm -hmm. they did a couple of CDs with Kronos Quartet. And they are flying from Mali to Barcelona. They will be, they will stay here for a couple of weeks. They will do workshops. We are having, I, I make a collaboration with a festival of people with mental um, with mental problems, they will be doing a workshop there. They will they will offer like an open African meal to all the neighbors. They will do workshops for families with rhythms. Uh, they will uh, invite and rehearse with a local artists with a string quartet because we couldn't bring Kronos this year. They were here a couple of years ago, but Great. they will do some of the repertory with a local uh, string quartet. They will and and they will sing three songs with three different singers from Barcelona, Aziz Abrahim, who is from Sahar, uh, Saharawi. There is uh, Nakani Kante from Guinea and some other musicians. So in total, that this will be our program, our music program, Tiora Kali, uh, String Quartet, and local musicians with African roots. That's an example. And they will be here for one and a half weeks, almost two weeks. And then they will continue their European tour. For example, we have also Kudus Onikeku, who is from Lagos. I think he's now actually working in Chicago. And Kudus has a festival in Lagos, in Nigeria, and he will be here also for two weeks. And we did like an open call with artists from different disciplines, photographers, architects, musicians, uh, dancers. And they will be all together for two weeks in a residency space. And they will create a performance of six hours length, free in the street. And they will do something similar that what they are, they are doing now in Lagos, which is like they close the main street in Lagos and they do a performance two or three days in the streets of Lagos. And I think they're doing it this year in, in Lagos, Chicago and Barcelona. So that's, a, that's an example also of how artists are global and how the models can be translated in a way or another. Uh, this is a way for me, a different way of working. Then of course, at the same time, Kudus is presenting his work on a different platform or in another theater, he will bring his work. So we see his work, but we also see his way of working and he will bring us mm, like new perspectives, new ideas from Africa uh, to the local artists. These are two examples, I think, mm -hmm. of what I wanted to say. Then of course, we also bring artists that present work and, and, and live. Like we have Dimitris Papayuanou, for example, from Greece, who we co-produce and we are sharing with other European festivals like Avignon, Holland Festival, uh, etc. Uh, that also are important to us. But with them, we have a longer relationship that uh, they are coming from now and then. An artist from Africa is exceptional. That's we will, this year we are concentrated on, on African artists on this type of work. But European artists is easier for us to have around. Hmm. How, how fantastic and in a way it sounds this is something only a festival can produce and, and also to give such a production major attention I think in the normal repertoire of a, like like in the New York season you know it will be one of many things and uh, and but, but, what but you when, do, Kronos, when mm -hmm. Kronos came here like in 2000 it was 19 I think 20, I can't remember. They also did a workshop. They work with the, with the School of Music here. They were here for more than a week. They created something that, I mean, you have to leave traces, right? Like a festival is not fireworks. You have to leave traces, if possible, positive traces. Uh, that you have, you, it's, it's like uh, food for the rest of the year, in a way. Yeah, incredible. And then also in that neighborhood, people who saw the product you said so many actually are from Barcelona of the audience to say they see each other all year they come back they you meet uh, families and 
and they go shop or teach students, teachers, what a great uh, contribution, you know, to, to, to create uh, a moment that people experience together and create, you know, in a way, a history and also then an identity because they say, well, it happened, you know, on that street in that theater and this is, I was there, so it is, the city is part of me. Tell a little bit, because you mentioned that, you know, it will be on the street, it will be in the square, it will be in the neighborhood. Tell us, how does the outside figure in your festival? Here, many, not only because of Corona, but there is a big uh, push also to think about clear, you know, maybe it's no longer okay to have it just inside the walls of the theater. We have to be outside and also to reach people and the audiences, there was, a, we had two curators from Berlin in the time of Corona, they created balcony. This was called the balconies, the balcone, um, where artists created work on their balconies, whether it was music, installations, art pieces, you know, over a weekend, people walked around in their masks with these things. Um, and they said, how come we haven't done something like this before? So what role does the outside play in the Barcelona festival? Mm, in our case, we, it's not very big. We don't do a lot of street theater, which we do in other festivals in the city, especially in the in the fiestas of the city, which is in September. So we are mostly doing work for like theater spaces or venues. Uh, um, in in in, I mean, I don't know if your question is more like like about protocols or how we do it in the, in the times of Corona. No, how or, it, it's, no. you said, uh, if I understood right, they were presented in the street. Some of the some of the results of the workshops, yeah. meals are shared. So about at the at the moment, we still we still using protocols. Like we still, uh, I mean, it's been a time where we had uh, to use chairs, so everybody was sitting in a chair, one point five meter distance, and so on and so on. So it was not possible to have like people in the street and, and just watching the show. So we had to create spaces where people, there was an entrance and an exit and chairs mm -hmm. of uh, like a, like 1.5 1, 1. meter distance. Now it's different. Now we're still creating like a, a, a spaces where people enter so we can count how many people are in that space. Uh, but it's not necessary any longer to have seats people can stand. Uh, as long as they, they are not like going together and concentrating mm -hmm. in one spot, uh, but uh, but uh, and they can even mm, from tomorrow on not use the mask if they are at more than one meter, one five distance. But right now we are only counting the people on a certain area, so um, so there's not other protocol than that. Uh, although as I said, we are not uh, we are not a street theater festival. I mean, we have seen lots of initiatives. There's been lots of initiatives uh, throughout the year. Um, terraces, balconies, uh, parkours, all kinds of stuff. For me, I do believe that uh, theater needs a certain space. I like, I, I mean, now we, we need people. We want, to be, uh, we, we want to be part of a group with people around. So I think we are trying to do that in the festival this year. Maybe in the future, it's, it's different, but now I think this sense of being uh, a part of a uh, together, uh, being some part of a bigger group is, is important to us because we've been isolated for so long that we need to see people around, even if it's at one, one meter distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I guess in theater, the director can say, light down, light up, right? Uh, you can, mm. if, you, if you want to, that it rains, you can make it rain, but you are not uh, uh, subject to, to the forces of nature and light. Mm. Um, tell me a bit about that festival you also created earlier. It's called the Folk Festival or Vika. What, 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 what is that? What, 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 what was that about? What was your <laughs> Well, project? that's part of uh, my very, very old... Uh... Yeah of history well i don't know i i i was I, I i grew up in the pyrenees in a small city in between spain and france and uh, very soon i was engaged with culture in that city and uh, uh well maybe that comes my my engagement with uh, with the city with the people comes from from that experience of growing in a in a small town but uh i've been working a lot with popular culture with uh, folk mm -hmm. choirs popular, all kinds of popular culture, mass uh, events, things like that, uh, which is something I think quite Mediterranean in a way. Um, mm -hmm. 
But, uh, well, I had a great time when I was working there, making big paellas for 2,000 people, all kinds of stuff. So I think uh, it's part of our culture also. Yeah, and it, I think it's also something to uh, really keep in mind or to be reminded of that there are traditions or folk traditions and uh, outside the centers that we have to take serious, pay attention to, and because they create also what we hope often to create uh, as a result from aesthetic production, the big, um, the big uh, cities and... Um, and uh, they create yeah. a sense of, of uniqueness. No? For example, if you look at uh, Gaudi, for example, Gaudi is, Gaudi's work, uh, they are like... Uh, the architect Gaudi who created these fantastic, yeah, the, this playful... Is, Eating, kind of eating very, very much from from art, artisan artisans uh, from uh, like wood artisans uh, from people that that come from the tradition of, of making wood or making the iron or, or or so I think listening to tradition but bringing bringing it to a new level. Uh, I'm for me I, I could not do now anymore like a traditional festival. Uh, I'm more like I think. Contemporary, contemporary arts are needed to move forward, but never forget about where you, where you come from. This is one phrase that was, um, that, I, I, that Peter Brook told me once, we were having a dinner a few years ago and Peter Brook told me that, never forget your roots. Uh, even if you are doing contemporary work, never forget where you come from. And I think I'm trying to keep that in mind. And actually yeah. Peter, Brook, Peter Brook is coming here next week. We have he we're hosting oh, him. We are fantastic. hosting him, we are presenting the, his latest work. The Tempest and mm -hmm. a 96 year old, and he's coming here uh, next week. So it's incredible. Uh, yeah, an, an incredible. Honor. Fantastic. And also, his daughter is now a successful, important director. At a, what a great, um, great uh, family. Um, what do you, what inspires you? I mean, not only in the time of Corona, but um, as a festival director, as a curator, what do you look for? for inspirations, what work of colleagues, you know, curated for festivals, but also music, books, uh, film, or how, where do you get your inspiration to see things different? Uh, I would say conversations, conversations and talks and, and talks to different type of people. I, I like very much to, to listen, to talk to people. Uh, when, when I go to, I say, when I go to a, like a platform or event or a festival, I'm looking for three things. I mean, one thing very important to me is like discover an artist that I've never heard about. And it's like a voice that, wow, you think there's something there. I looking for a good conversation with an intelligent people, intelligent person and a good meal. I think these three things, these three moments of, uh, these are my three moments of inspiration, a good meal, a good conversation, and an artist that surprises me. Hmm. Well, this is quite, um, quite, quite, quite. It sounds so simple, but still, you know, not so easy um, 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 to 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 get together. And will you stay with the festival for the next five years? Do you have other plans, and or for the next year? What what's on your mind? Well, always this, one wave ahead. I know you're surfing the one I'm starting right now. tomorrow. I'm starting tomorrow. And, but, and like everyone <laughs> looks ahead already. So what's on your head? What's on your mind? Uh, right now, I mean, because I I was I mean I was selected through an open call on a on a like a, a five years project that has been prolonged for now two years more. So I will be doing the festival 22, 23, maybe 24. And now there's going to be elections in the city, and we'll see. Because I depend on the on, on also on the mayor of Barcelona, which is uh, Ada Colau, you heard of. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, she was very very supportive last year, and um, and I mean, she's really she's really supportive. She was very important. She was brave enough to say go ahead with the festival last year. And, Incredible uh, decision, yeah. Yeah, for a politician, yes. Yeah. it's easier to say no, no, no. Culture is not important. Stay at home. Yeah. She was brave enough to say go ahead. I've seen your plans. I've seen your project. I think we have the the yes from the healthy authorities. Go ahead, and and we did. And and I think that's something quite rare for a politician. Yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah. quite happy. Mm. And Paris didn't do it, even so. Statistics very clearly said with enough social distancing in large spaces like theaters, uh, infections risk are the lowest of all. It is actually uh, restaurants with no air condition, office spaces, churches with singing, and others. You know that theaters 
itself are I was very, very nervous. Space, I, mean, you know? I have to say that I didn't sleep for a few weeks because I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. I mean, if this would work or not. We were the first ones, so yeah. it was it was a moment of I mean, certainly very difficult because we we didn't know. It. I mean, you don't want to feel responsible for a case of of, mm -hmm. of, of Corona in, in many people, but it, it it worked. It was it was safe. And uh, I'm quite now happy that we could do it. But and at you did the moment it, of yeah. taking the decision was not so easy. And you did it better than the city um, of Paris. And, and, and also at very late, they did open some, some of the theaters, but then they said, you have to be back home at eight or nine o'clock, you know, by curfew. So it was impossible actually to go through. And, um, but especially this candle of saying, you know, bookshops have to be closed. Alcohol stores are open. Mm -hmm. No control at all in churches, but yeah, theaters, not even 20% were allowed in. It's in, difficult to say. There's in, been a lot of was, contradictions. Yeah, yeah, but it was not defensible. Also, you know, to say, what is our society about? And I like to hear that you said it gave you back your belief that culture is of significance, you know, the gratitude people showed, and also that they went out demonstrating for it. I've never heard that in all of our 160. Uh, talks now so um, you never heard uh, of la, la cultura in the segura. time of culture corona that people went out uh, demonstrating to have theaters open i did not hear that i did well i have to say it was a, it was a delicate moment because we, we 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 i mean that night we had a company that you probably know peeping tom was was, yep. was about to, to perform at uh they were got they, they we didn't have the permission to open the theater. It was seven o'clock. We didn't have the permission. It was eight o'clock. We didn't have the permission. They, I told them, "Be ready, be ready," because we're going to do it. And at eight o'clock, people started gathering in front of the theater, saying, "We want to enter. We want to enter." And we let people in. And then we got the permission at well after ten, but we we started the show uh, with. It was very very special because all the shows last year started with an applause before the show there was an applause before the show every night people were like doing mm. an applause for like yes here we are culture is happening festival is happening it was amazing hmm. well this is as you said at the very beginning these are some good news some optimistic news and um, not only that you created something in Barcelona and you help to keep it alive and in an important moment that really contributes you know to the experience of being human on planet earth um, one of the great things actually you can see, you know, um, and the experience with your eyes and you doubt, see moments on stage and something developing. Uh, Tanya Bruguera, the great Cuban artist said, you know, I did so many installations where people come look for a moment, you know, and then yeah, they go to the next uh, gallery of uh, things. But in the theater, people sit down for two hours to watch a play they already know you know, and they're mm. interested in it. How, what are the choices? How did they do it? What's different? You know, how incredible and how uh, beautiful and, uh, and you learn something, you question, you know, things perhaps for your own life, your family, your city, your states and for the world itself. So um, it is great. Normally at this moment, I uh, announce the program for next week. Uh, we won't uh, because this is um, officially the part of the Corona talks and we had to cancel our entire season last March uh, to June, so we this came out of that moment of doing something, feeling that it was important to listen how artists are doing, to feel connected, but also to uh, they maybe get some help to uh, they feel that we are not alone, but also how to deal with this situation. It's been an incredible um, journey for us again on July 20, as we will have a 24 hour thank you to all theater artists around the world who helped to make this a better place like you. I hope you will join us with some readings for our Indian colleague. You know, they, you made a, a difference in your town uh, and to the life of so many and had to make courageous choices um, and, um, and stand up for something. So it's a big uh, inspirational uh, a moment, I think for all of us and also shows that uh, things will go on. The big question is how will it go on? Yesterday, Alec Duffy and Brian here said, you know, the city should invest like in small starts up, give $50,000 to perhaps your community from Africa and say, then start a theater. Let's run it for three years and see rent at least is paid, see what comes out to perhaps help, you know, very small groups do something on the big stages um, and um, that this what happened, and then have residencies, perhaps also multi-year residencies, so artists can create or not create and do research. And uh, so, um, so many things are changing, have already changed. Perhaps we are too close to really see what has happened, and only in ten 
20 years from now, we will really understand this moment. But for this hour now, for this day, you helped us to make sense and the world seems like a good place. So really, thank you for that. And I wish I could be uh, with you tomorrow on the Ramblas of Barcelona and uh, have a glass of wine. Congratulations, what a great thing it was. Who we don't have that here in the city. You know, it means um, so much more to know it's out there and that perhaps it is something we can all work to. Again, uh, thank you to HowlRound for having been such a good partner for over 160 talks. Uh, we had over 200 artists from over 50 countries uh, speaking to us. So I think it was a meaningful contribution in this time. Um, hopefully it cut through also a little bit, you know, through that big uh, uh, questions um, that we all have on our minds and we are still learning. And I think what you said um, became even more uh, important. It's all about listening. And I think this is what that series was about. We called it also radical listening, you know, to really um, have also space and time um, and life. You know, normally interviews were edited three hours, but, you know, into one or two pages and then two PR agents and editors go back and forth and then something is published. This was a very honest, open um, M series and perhaps different of, because of it. And people performed in a way themselves and showed where they are very honest. Um, so um, it's been a tremendous privilege for us. And we will actually continue this. This radically changed the work and the mission also of us, the Siegel Center. And we will do continue the Siegel talk, but no longer just on Corona, but perhaps with themes. So we stay connected with the global world. And we don't have to fly someone in. I mean, when Sergei Bebal came in, we have to say he has to come. But this is the time. And can you be here? We did the reading, you know. But now we understand. Maybe we could have also had him. Um, on the on the phone and put that money towards a small production. Who knows, you know? So a lot of things um, will be different. So we would like to thank all the artists involved, all the curators, all the uh, thinkers and academics who participate us, um, and especially our listeners for being such a, a loyal crowd. Uh, we got also a lot of mails, how important that series has been. We, it's something between 60 and 100,000 people, we think, listen to all our talks. You know, one time, even for the first, we had five, 6,000 people listening, incredible numbers for a small center where we normally have 60, 70 people if the house is full of it. We were praying for it when we had discussions. So something has happened and, um, and it uh, has been very meaningful for us. And I hope it also uh, um, gave an inspiration um, and to everybody who listened and to HowlRound again for hosting us, VJ and uh, Thea and uh, Andy Lerner here from the Siegel Center. So it's been a great privilege. So I would like to thank everybody. I hope you can join us on July 20th. We're going to do a 24 hour closing day of the Siegel Talks, uh, celebrating the work of all theater artists around the globe who made a difference uh, and um, but especially also raising awareness of what's happening in India, where our theater colleagues are in the most apocalyptic uh, moments of their lives and of the state. Right now, they are fighting for their lives. And what they do is truly exceptional and heroic. So uh, thank you so much. And I can't believe yeah, that you took the time out a day before the opening, but I think it's a great end note for us. We're lucky we didn't get the call, even so you would have had permission to call to Martin with your artists from Mali and we could have listened in. And so uh, really uh, uh, thank you uh, so much and uh, all the best for the festival. And I hope we will have also connections here to New York. Bye-bye and thank you um, to everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.